Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather and this is Create Your Own Cozy. On today's video, we are making a bunch of risers from items that I grabbed from the thrift store a long time ago that is stuck in my basement in my hoard, or um, what I am lovingly referring to as my inventory system that's waiting to be tackled. So I grabbed those items along with some scrap wood and did a bunch of riser projects to get in my booth because those have been selling pretty well there and to help me with um, displaying in my studio hutch that I was working on in last week's video. So if you wanna see what I do, stick around. So the first project this week is going to be a pretty simple one. I grabbed some stuff from my basement and put it together. I have this gold base and it's a, it's a pretty shiny gold and I am just going to marry it with this piece of wood with some E6000. As of this video, I am leaving the gold as is, but seeing the final pictures kind of makes me want to do something else. So I scrape off the stickers and I do end up scraping off those little um, foam feet right there as well. And I decided to use a white swan from DIY on top of the wood. Um, if this wood is, was in good shape, I would just leave it as is, but it really wasn't. So I just wanted to do two coats of the DIY white swan, use a wet um, towel to wet distress it so that some of the wood could peek back through. And then I sealed it with Big Top. I did use E6000, let it sit overnight. And now I'm wondering, should I also paint the base white and then just let a little bit of the gold peek through? Um, gold does, like I have gold in my home. It does possibly sell for me, but is this too gold? Let me know in the comments below what you think I should do. So I bought like three of these little pink cloches a while back for maybe 50 cents a piece and I've never found anything to do with them. So I was trying to build something to put them on and just had these pieces in my stash. Um, let's just call it inventory waiting to be used. I'm marrying these three pieces together, just putting two coats of DIY's white swan on here did a little bit of wet distressing so the metal can come back through and I made sure that I painted the bottom as well so that it didn't look like someone's paint project when I was selling it in my booth. I considered after, do I figure out some way to add like this little wood knob to the top of the pink dome to make it look more unique? But I'm just gonna put it in the booth as is. I don't really have anything super small to stage it with and I think it's cute as is but you know someone could have like a little tiny trinket at home and this could be the perfect way to display it. You'll see that I am sealing this with DIY's Big Top and then I'm using E6000 and you will notice I learned to wipe it off every time so that you don't have problems getting the lid off. Thank you. 
For my third project today, we are using four different components. So I started with this little baking tin, tart tin, did two coats. You know what? I think I did three coats on this one because it was such a dark color through there of the DIY white swan paint. Did wet distress it. And for this one, I just used a baby wipe and it worked really well. I wanted to see all those little ridges. And while I was painting this, I wasn't sure if I was going to with a tin facing upwards or downwards. So that's why I made sure I distressed from both sides. So when it was time to glue, I could just decide which way I wanted to go. Also, when I'm using a baby wipe, I usually go through it one time and they get a fresh baby wipe and take that little paint haze off of it. So it doesn't look like it's just a hazy paint on the part you distressed. Um, and then on the inside, you'll see there was this part that wasn't taking paint very well. So after I was distressing it, I just did another coat of paint and problem solved. Next, I covered it with big top so that the paint would be sealed. DIY paint always needs to be sealed so that it does not reactivate. The beauty of it is it can dry and you can reactivate it to distress it, but you have to remember to seal it in so that it stays the way you want it to stay. After this, I have a little wooden piece that I felt needed a little just antiquing wax to freshen it up and to make it consistent. And you will see that I find an old spindle to kind of cut a piece to put in the dome and I just used E6000 in there. So this is something that I had four different components to marry them all together. What do you guys think? So for this next one, I am marrying three items. The first one is this base. It said I paid $3.99 for it. I sure hope I did not pay more than half of that. Um, regardless, it was in my stash as well as this round with a handle on it. So I just did handy dandy white swan. I didn't love how this finish was, but I kind of liked the green color on it and wanted it to poke through. So I did two coats of DIY, wet distressed, you know the drill, um, covered it with Big Top, and then took the handle off the wood round and went over it. It was a very um, thirsty wood, so I went over it at first with a watered down antiquing wax, and I didn't like how little the color changed from that, so I just put my paintbrush right into the wax so it would be a little bit darker of a color. And it didn't end up very dark after I did this. I went straight wax, then wiped it back, 
and then used E6000. So you'll see a lot of these projects have the same process with much different looks to them. And it just requires you to marry up some of the pieces that you already have or that you find in the thrift store to make some risers that can elevate the look of your space. So for my last project today, I started by trying to solve a problem. Do you see how in here, like I'm not using the full height of my storage cabinet and in here, all the paint is starting to pile up and I can't see what I have. And the more and more I open DIY colors, the more I'm going to have. So I'm going to make some risers. I found this scrap wood, cut it to um, first of all I put three cans across it cut it to the right length that I would need for my space and then since I had two of these boards I'm making two extras to put in my booth every time I put these guys in my booth I sell them pretty quick and I price them at $18 I might need to go up to maybe 22 I did take this outside and hit the edges with my orbital sander to get these little splinters off and to make it look like I didn't just cut the edge off with the saw I don't want it to look like fresh wood so I took DIYs dark and decrepit did just one layer over the wood and then wiped it down so it wasn't too stark, let that fully dry, then went over these boards with one coat of paint and then wet distressed it so the wood color would come through. Then I sealed it with Big Top, used E6000 to put the little feet knobs on. Now, the knobs that I'm using in today's video, I did get from Amazon and I will try to find a link and put that in the description below. But I also um, have found stuff like this at Hobby Lobby as well. So obviously these little wooden knobs are fresh wood and I don't want that again, but I won't, don't want it to be as dark as a dark and decrepit. I used some watered down antiquing wax, just did one little coat on these to make them look like they were found in my old stash um, instead of bought brand new. The other stands that you see me use in these projects are from the Dollar Tree and I do nothing to them because they're already white and just glue them on.
So did you guys have a favorite from today's video? Listen, I am normally not a little share person, but I got a collection like all of these for like 25 cents a piece and figured they would be cute going in my booth to supplement all the other stuff that I have going on. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite project was and if you have already added some Valentine's Day slash a little more color to your booth. Guys, um, if you haven't seen my cute little YouTube short with me dancing like a crazy person, I am excited to say I reached the 10,000 subscriber mark and nothing magical happens at 10,000. It was just a goal that I had of mine and wanted to make sure that I celebrated and that I celebrated with you guys because I could not do this without you guys. So I wanted to say thank you very much for being here. And if you haven't already subscribed, please consider subscribing to my channel. I, I look forward to hearing from all of you guys and I have so many great ideas for this year. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.